the pay when you were a player is, is a lot less than it is now. Is, is that painful? No. Nah. No? No. You can only be a person of your time, can't you? But I tell you what, the best thing that happened to us was when Maggie got in. Maggie Thatcher. Okay. Because it went from... Eight, we were at one stage. We were paying eighty three pence in the pound in tax. Eighty three pence. Wow. So you got seventeen p out of every quid you earned. <laughs> wow. God Almighty, can you imagine? Yeah. And she, there was a massive roar in the dressing room when she announced, it, and the boys going, "Go on!" And it went down to sixty, which we <laughs> thought was which we thought was great, obviously from eight, eighty three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but the other thing about that, the side was that obviously we were earning really good money because and we were winning stuff. So it's kind of softened the blow a little bit, but yeah. There are 80, 83, 80. oh yeah, 83 pence in the pound. Yeah. And of course, some of the lads have been stupid footballers, didn't even know. They didn't look at the pay slip or anything. Yeah. Then, then about three weeks later, I think, oh, I've not got very much money left. They think they're earning X, they've gone and spent it. Absolutely, and they're like, well, yeah. hang on. <laughs> We're all stupid footballers, aren't <laughs> we? Got, only got 17, uh, 17% of that. Mm. Hey, does it surprise you? We hear so many stories now of footballers going bankrupt, having financial difficulties. I've spoken to a number that have, when they are earning such money now. Yeah, I think, and the other, the other thing is, the, the, the guys that get divorced between, I think it's 35 to 40, mm. is the, the percentage is staggering. Okay. Absolutely staggering. Ex-players, you mean? Yeah. Because I guess they've stopped playing yeah. and they're lost in that window. Yeah, they? and then maybe they go off the rails a little bit, yeah. go on the on the on the source and stuff, yeah. and you know what am I going to do? And you know, because you you have to remember that basically you were you were like a, a sheep, right? Just follow what you told. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Which is you know, if you've got a group of fellas, you you got to kind of do it that way, yeah, haven't yeah. you? But you, you you seriously were, and um, they wouldn't even know about the pensions and everything. They wouldn't. Mm. They'd have a pension. But they wouldn't kind of ring up the guy who's in charge of it every other month and say, you know, how are we doing? And is yeah. it going up? Is it going down? And, um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a strange thing. Yeah, we had, uh, as Sam spoke to Danny Murphy yesterday mm. here, and he's telling that exact story that he went through exactly what you described that post playing difficult time and, and, um, drink, cocaine, and, yeah, marriage ended and, yeah, a hard thing to, uh, to deal with well do you, you don't because i don't there aren't too many that you don't have to plan for your future now because it's just amazing the money isn't it but in in when when the premier league start 92 i think wasn't it and that Around i then, think yeah. that was that was then that was different because obviously clubs are getting more money players are getting more money and that's but the, i mean in saying that there's been some really clever ones as well hmm. but maybe not as the many who's obviously got divorced and gone on the lash yeah. Do you remember when you were playing what your highest paycheck was? I can remember for the season because we won, we won, it's, it's Joe Fagan went, so we won the league, um, not the FA Cup, the League Cup and European Cup. And I think that year I got paid 110 grand. The whole year? Yeah. So it was 1984. So in, in footballer terms, because it's all quoted in weekly, you're talking... Uh, Two thousand pound a week, two five a roughly. week probably, yeah. isn't it? Two and a half, just yeah, slightly less than that. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah, don't know where it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I just because and people seem to think that because we, like, I remember we the, we got the bonuses for winning the league, five grand for winning the league, five grand for winning the league cup, five grand for winning the European cup. Which if you think about that is nuts because the European cup should have been yeah, 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 up yeah. there off the yeah, scale. Yeah, yeah. But it was almost like, and I'm pretty sure that that the club made the decision after we'd won all three, so it wasn't anything written in our contracts. Mm, okay. But then you, you kind of you went in the office. You know, if they called you in, um, Peter Robinson, the old secretary who's, who's, who's gone now, God love his, the rest of his soul, he, he basically ran Liverpool. And he'd say, right, I uh, need you to sign a new contract and this is it. There'd be a bit of like to and fro but you'd be done in half an hour. Wow. No agents. No, I think the no only, big standoffs. No big like standoffs. Um, and I know that Kenny was a difficult one. Right. Like, gosh, you see, so what do you expect? <laughs> Every pound's a prisoner. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, but they just got called in. And I, I in talking about the money, Rushy Rush signed for Juventus. Okay. And the deal was, we just won the European Cup. And the deal was that um, he was going to sign for Juventus. 
loan back to Liverpool. Okay, and I just, I was 18 months into my four year contract and I got called up into the office to see Peter Robertson. Oh, this is strange. I go and he said, oh, Mark, we're going to give you a new contract. And I didn't, you know, because obviously you trust everybody as well. You think, oh, fab. And we agreed the money probably in half an hour. Right. You know, obviously completely different, more money and all that kind of stuff. You're thinking, great. Yeah. And then I remember we were, we were, we were, Halfway through the season, and um, there was a, a guy at Liverpool called Tom Saunders who was, he was, he'd go and watch European um, opposition and go to the hotel, have a look, check, all those kind of things. But yeah. he was all seen, and, and he was a really bright, in bright, intelligent man. And we're on a flight, and he used to sit next to me for some reason. We used to have a good chat and stuff. And we, we, I'll tell you where we were. It was end of season. We were going to Bangkok for a friendly Crikey, <laughs> just what you need, right? And we, we went, that, and that's right, we're in a storm. We were in a storm, and he grabbed hold of my arm, sat next to me. And, like, I don't mind flying, but I'm thinking, this isn't good. Yeah, and he's, really he's gone white. Whew, and, of course, like, we, we get through this storm, have another drink. And I, he said, they wanted you, you know. And I said, what do you mean, Tom? He said, uh, he said you know, where Rushy's gone, they wanted you. Wow. And I went, all right. He said, would well, you have gone? And I said, yeah, because I did my languages at school then, and I loved, I loved all that and got my uh, A-levels with them all and stuff. And, and I went, yeah, yeah. And then I went, I thought, shit, no wonder he wanted me to sign a new contract after a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. Because I didn't have an agent or anything. Yeah. And Tom Saunders wasn't the kind of person who, it was just very, very straight and everything. They wanted it, you know, and I went. <sighs> and that was at Juventus? Mm. Wow. With mm. the... And so then, obviously, you know, you think of Syria. Was that in its heyday? Was that a little bit it before? Was getting, it was getting there. Yeah, yeah, it was getting there, and it was it was big money. Well, Juventus were um, the car company, weren't they? Right. Okay. Uh, Agnelli. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was big money. Rushy, <laughs> when Rushy signed, they said to him, um, towards the end of the season, although he still played for Liverpool, would he come and? Um, go to one of the games and meet some of the fans and everything. So he said, yeah, yeah. So they sent, sent a plane for him, PJ, mm -hmm. as it called now, isn't it? And um, <laughs> he had an agent. He had an agent, I do remember it. So he said, he said, me and the agents are sat on the plane. And he said, the two guys from, from Juventus are kind of sat up there and everything. And Rushy said to the agent, he said, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. He said, you know, and, and the deal was that he'd been learning Italian. Mm. <laughs> and he, he used to get changed between me and Al, me and Hansen. So, like, we're slaughtering him, aren't we? Come right. on, say some Italian or, 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 <laughs> yeah, or all that yeah, kind yeah. of Right, you can imagine, won't you? <laughs> and uh, so he said to the agent, I wonder if we can have a beer. Do you think they mind? Right. So the agent went up to the, the two guys and said, Look, you know, he's not playing or anything. They said, Yeah, 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 of course. So apparently one went to two, <laughs> quickly went to six. six. So when they, when they got to Turin, Right, but they, what are the what are the Juventus officials said? Ian, he said, what we're going to do? He said, they open the door. The, the ladders will come down. I said, we're letting all the people onto the concourse, all the supporters, about two thousand. He said, we'd just like you to, to say something to them. He went, yeah, yeah, no problem. So we land, <laughs> doors open, wheels come down. All this two thousand, well, sorry, they land. All these two thousand people come, and he stood there and he put his arm arm up like that and went, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> to be fair to him, he told a story on himself as well because he could have kept that quiet and got away. He went, welcome. On. <laughs> How's your Italian? Yeah, not this flowing Italian speech. No, they were, they were exactly. Yeah, ex absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a great story. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the ones you can tell. Right, yeah. okay. And there are many that you can't. Oh, yes. This is just a small clip from my one hour plus conversation with Mark Lawrenson. If you want to watch the full video, you can do so right here.